In today's lecture, we will discuss higher order derivative test. So this particular test will be used to check whether if a function is at its local maximum or it is at its local minimum. As the name suggests, so there could be multiple maximum and minimum values, but we are going to check locally at a particular point, that means around x equals to c, and we'll see whether if that point is having a local maximum or a local minimum. For instance, let's see, we have a function which is given of this particular form. Although looking at this, we can say this function might have a minimum value here and a maximum value here, but we are only talking about locally. Locally speaking, this function is going to have a maximum value at this point and it's going to have a minimum value at this particular point. Now, how do we check whether if these points are actually having a local maximum or a local minimum? So for this, we are going to use the derivative test. That means we'll take the derivative once and check whether if this point is at a local maximum or at a local minimum. So let's talk about the first derivative test. First of all, we have to check whether if that particular function is differentiable or not in that given interval and it has to be around the point C where we want to check its uh, maximum or minimum value. And then what we'll do, we will let uh, our value of the derivative at that point go to zero. There are two things that we need to check. The first thing will be if our derivative changes sign, the first derivative changes sign from positive to negative at that point C, then our point C is going to be considered as a local maximum for the function. And the other one will be if the derivative changes sign from negative to positive, then our C is going to be considered as a local minimum. So what we do generally, we will be getting some critical points. So let's say one critical point is C1, the other critical point is C2. So what we'll do in the first derivative test, we will have to check what's the value to the left hand side of C1 if it is positive and to the right hand side if it is negative, then we see that on going from left to right, the sign changes from positive to negative. So C1 is going to be a point of local maxima. So this is the point of local maxima. And suppose when we go from left to right, uh, crossing the point C2, if to the right is positive, now it is changing sign from negative to positive. In that case, C2 will be considered as a point of local minima. So this is how we'll be using the first derivative test to check whether if the point C1 and C2 are either point of local maxima or point of local minima. However, there will be certain cases when, let's say this is the critical point, then suppose we say that one going from left to right, it's not, it's not changing sign, so it's positive, or sometimes it could be negative. In that case, we say that C is a point of inflection. We'll talk more about inflection later on. Now, there is one more test. There is a second derivative test, so let's talk about it. The so second derivative test is what we have to do. We'll have to first check whether if we have a differentiable function or not and then it also has to be differentiable on a given interval about c and we will use f prime of c that means we'll calculate the derivative of that function at that point c equated to zero which will give us certain critical points then again we will find out the second derivative of our original function f of x and using those critical values we will compute the second derivative and if its value is positive then we say that our C is a point of local minimum. And if the value of the derivative at that particular critical point comes out to be negative, then C is going to be considered as a point of local maximum. And if there's a third case, if the value of the second derivative test at that particular critical point comes out to be zero, then we say that C is a point of inflection. So what is an inflection point? So inflection point is where we cannot determine whether if a function is increasing or decreasing. For example, let's say we have a function fx equals to x cubed. If we draw the graph of this particular function, then it is going to have a shape of the form. Yeah. Now consider this, the origin to be the critical point. Now what happens? As we're moving from left to right, we see that the function is increasing. 
whereas when we are moving from right to left the function is decreasing so that means whenever we have a situation at a particular point if you go to one side it is increasing and you move to the other side it is decreasing that is when we say that this is a point of inflection so at that particular point we cannot exactly say for sure if the function is increasing or decreasing okay so let's use all these tests the first derivative test and the second derivative test to check whether if a given point is a point of local maxima or local minima also one more thing that i would note you can use either the first derivative test or the second derivative test both of them are going to yield the same result so here is the first problem we have to find all local maxima and minima and their corresponding maximum and minimum values for the function given by this so let's begin so we have the function f of x which is so this is a original equation what we will do here is we'll find the derivative of this function with respect to x so we have negative 3 over 4 times we use the power rule to get the derivative of x raised to the power of 4 which will be 4x cubed minus 8 times derivative of x cubed is 3x squared minus 45 over 2 is a constant so is the other cases we will untouch it and multiply it to derivative of x squared which is 2x plus derivative of a constant is 0 so this gives us negative 3x cubed minus 24x squared minus 45x or we can take negative 3 x as the common factor so we'll have x squared plus 8x plus 50 right. so this is the value of our derivative of the function f of x now what we'll do in order to find out the local maximum or the local minimum all we have to do is set the value of this derivative equals to 0 and in doing so, when we solve this particular equation, we will get critical points. That means we have now negative 3x times x squared plus 8x plus 15. So this is equals to 0. Now we have to solve this quadratic equation. Negative 3 cannot be equals to 0. So we simply have x multiplied to x squared plus 8x plus 15. So this is x plus 3 times x plus 5 this is equals to 0 and on solving this we get three critical values x1 will be 0 x2 will be 3 and x3 this is negative 3 not 3 and x3 will be negative 5 so these are called the critical values critical values means the value of x where the derivative or the slope of the tangent line to the given original curve goes to zero but we cannot say for sure whether if these points are for example x1 equals to zero this could be a point of local maximum or a local minimum similarly for x2 and x3 but we cannot say that for sure and in order to be completely sure about that what we'll have to do is use the derivative test so we'll begin with the first derivative test for this what we'll do we will draw a number line and on this number line we'll take this point so we'll take negative 5 negative 3 and 0 now we will consider few numbers uh, not exactly these numbers but some numbers which are close to these numbers for example we can say take a number for this particular interval let's take a number which is less than negative 5 so let's take the number at x equals to negative 6 this is to the left of negative 5 and we'll calculate the value of our derivative because we're talking about the first derivative test so let me write down the function f dash x we obtained this value as actually negative 3x multiplied to x plus 3 times x plus 5 so we'll be using this so at x equals to negative 6 negative 3 times negative 6 multiplied to negative 6 plus 3 times negative 6 plus 5 so this is equals to negative 3 times negative 6 will be 18 actually we do not need to calculate the value all we have to check uh, is the sign so this is negative 3 times negative 1 and this is coming out to be a positive value 
So let's note this down. So we obtain a positive value to the left hand side of negative 5. Now we'll consider another value between negative 5 and negative 3. So we will choose x equals to, let's say, negative 4. We'll use easier values. So we have f prime of negative 4. So this will be equals to negative 3 times negative 4 multiplied to negative 4 plus 3 times negative 4 plus 5. So this is positive 12. Negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1 and negative 4 plus 5 is positive 1. So we are getting a negative value here. So let's note it down as well. Now we'll take another value between negative 3 and 0. Let's take the value x equals to negative 1. Then in that case we have f prime of negative 1 will be the negative 3 times negative 1 will be positive 3. A negative 1 plus positive 3 will be 2 and negative 1 plus 5 will be 4. So that means we have a positive value here. So this is positive and we'll consider one more value to the right of 0. So we'll consider x equals to 1. So here the derivative calculated at x equals to 1 will be we have negative 3 times 1 times 4 times 6. So this is a negative value. So we have a negative value. Now let's look at each of the point one by one. From for this particular point, negative 5, we see the sign changes from positive to negative. Since it is from positive to negative, so this is a, a point of local maxima. And for the next one, for negative 3, the sign changes from negative to positive as we move from left to right. So this will be a point of local minima. And for x equals to 0, we have the sign changing from positive to negative. So this is a point of local maxima. So here we have two maximas and one minima. So let's note all of them. So x equals to negative 5 and x equals to 0. These are the points of local maxima. And x equals to negative 3. This gave us a point of local minima. Now that we have all the local maxima and local minima, we also need to find out the corresponding uh, value of the function. So we'll start with local minima. So the value of the function at x equals to negative 3. So this will be equals to 231 divided by 4. So this is the local minimum. The point x equals to negative 3 is the local minima and the value of the function at that point will be the local minimum of the function. Then we consider x equals to 0. In that case, we will have 105. So this will be the local maximum. And finally, for x equals to negative 5, which is also a point of local maximum. So substituting this value gives us 295 divided by 4. So this is also the local maximum of the function. Now, since we are talking about local maximum and minima, so we can have uh, even more than one maximum or minimum of a function. So these are local. But when we talk about absolute values, then there can be only one maximum and one minimum. So let's also try to use the second derivative test to verify that what we obtained was correct. We have the original function f of x and we took the first derivative to obtain this polynomial function will again take its derivative with respect to x. So this is going to give us, so negative 3x cubed will be negative 9x raised to the power of 2 minus 24x squared, its derivative with respect to x will be 48x minus derivative of 45x will be simply 45. Let's take negative 3 as the common factor. Now we'll consider at x equals to negative 5. So we'll plug this value into a derivative. So we have negative 5. So this gives us a value negative 30. Negative 30 means this is less than 0. So we'll say that this is the point of local maxima. Recall that whenever the second derivative test is negative, second derivative is negative, we have a local maxima. 
will take x equals to negative 3. So f double dash of negative 3 will be equals to 18. So this is positive. So this will be a point of local minima. And for x equals to 0, f double prime of 0, this will be equals to negative 45, which is again less than 0, a point of local maxima. This is exactly what we obtain when we use our first derivative test. So you can go for either the first derivative test or the second derivative test to check whether if a point is a point of local maxima or a point of local minima. So let's do another problem. Problem number two, we need to determine the maxima and local minima for the function x times e raised to the power of x. So let us begin. Well, we will first take the derivative of this particular given function with, the, with respect to x and this will be, we'll have to use the product rule. So first we'll consider x multiplied to derivative of the exponential function, which is the function itself plus the exponential function times derivative of x, which is 1. And this gives us e raised to the power of x multiplied to x plus 1. Then we will set the derivative f prime of x equals to 0, and this will help us obtain the critical point. This means e raised to the power of x times x plus 1 is equals to 0. However, e raised to the power of x, this cannot go to 0, so this is not equals to 0. But the only possibility is that x plus 1 equals to 0, or you can say x is negative 1. So this is one critical point that we have obtained. Now what we'll do, we'll draw, we'll consider the first derivative test. All we need to do is draw a number line with one value, negative 1. We'll consider a few numbers to the left of negative 1 and to the right of negative 1. So let's consider x equals to negative 2. So this will give us f prime of x. So this is x is r, negative 2. So this will be equals to, so this is f prime of x. So we have e raised to the power of negative 2 multiplied to negative 2 plus 1. So this is always a positive value and negative 2 plus 1 is negative. So this will give us a negative value. So this will be minus. And then we take a value to the right of negative 1. So we'll consider an easy value, 0. So f prime of 0 will be e raised to the power of 0 multiplied to 0 plus 1. So this is a positive value. So we have a positive value. So clearly we see that as we go from negative, uh, as we go, as we pass along this critical point, the sign changes from negative to positive, the sign of the first derivative. So we'll say that x equals to negative 1 is a point of local minima because it's going from negative to positive. Now, we see here that there is no local maxima present. So it only has a local minima value. So what will be the minimum value of this function at this particular point? So we'll calculate f of minus 1. So we simply substitute the value into x e raised to the power of x. So we have negative 1 e raised to the power of negative 1, which is negative 1 over e. So this is going to be the minimum value of this function, which is obtained at x equals to negative 1. And this function does not have any local maximum. Now, we will check whether if this answer is actually correct or not with the help of a second derivative test. Right. So we have f of x equals to x e raised to the power of x. From here, we obtain the first derivative, which is x plus 1 multiplied to e raised to the power of x. Now what we'll do, we'll take the derivative of f prime of x. So this will give us the second derivative, which will be, so we'll treat x plus 1 as the first function and e raised to the power of x as the second function. So we have x plus 1 multiplied to e raised to the power of x, which is the function itself plus e raised to the power of x multiplied to, so we have x plus 1. So I'll take the derivative. This will give us 1. Right. So we'll take e raised to the power of x as the common factor. So this leaves us with x plus 2. So this is our second derivative. Now we found out one critical point. So at x equals to negative 1, which was our critical point. So f so f double prime of minus 1 is equals to e raised to the power of negative 1 multiplied to negative 1 plus 2. 
this is always a positive value negative 1 plus 2 is also positive so we are getting greater than 0 so this is local minima so whenever the second derivative gives us a positive value we have a local minima and then there are no other critical points or we cannot say anything about the maxima value so yes x equals to negative 1 is indeed the point of local minima with a value of negative 1 over e so let's move on to the next problem so we have e raised to the power of negative x square so let's begin we'll consider the function f of x equals to e raised to the power of negative x square now we'll take this derivative with respect to x i hope that you are now fairly familiar with how to find a derivative using the chain rule so this is going to give us e raised to the power of negative x squared multiplied to the derivative of negative x squared which is the chain rule so the derivative of negative x squared will be negative 2x multiplied to e raised to the power of negative x squared so this is our first derivative we'll have to find out the critical points so we will set f prime of x equals to 0 and this gives us negative 2x times e raised to the power of negative x squared equals to 0 which means x is equals to 0 because the exponential function cannot be 0 only possibility is that our value x equals to 0 this is a critical point now what we'll do we will consider the so what is the first derivative test so first derivative test is we draw a number line consider one point and this point will be the critical point now we take values less than zero and greater than zero so at x equals to negative one f of f prime of negative one this is this value this is negative two times negative one times e raised to the power of negative one so this is a positive value fine so this is positive then at x equals to so we'll take a value to the right of zero let's take positive one then f prime of positive one will be negative two times e raised to the power of negative one the exponential is always a positive value all we have to look is at the coefficient of the exponent exponential value which is negative two so this is going to be negative so here we have a negative value so clearly we see that the sign changes from positive to negative as we move from left to right passing through the critical point zero so we'll say that x equals to zero this is the point of local maxima so this is maxima because we're going from positive to negative the sign changes from positive to negative then what will be the maximum value of this function so at x equals to zero f of 0 our function is e raised to the power of negative x square so we have e raised to the power of negative 0 square which is actually 1 so this is the maximum value of the function which occurs at x equals to 0 now we will perform the second derivative test the second derivative test is all we have to do is the take the derivative of the first derivative so f double prime of x will be we will have to take the derivative of negative 2x times e raised to the power of negative x square so let's perform the derivative so here we'll use the product rule so we have x times derivative of e raised to the power of negative x square so that's 2x e raised to the power of negative x squared plus e raised to the power of negative x squared multiplied to derivative of x so that is 1 will take e raised to the power of negative x squared as the common factor and take negative 2 inside so this will give us positive 4x squared minus 2 fine so this is f double prime of x we obtain a critical value at x equals to 0 so this is e raised to the power of 0 times 4 times 0 squared will be 0 minus 2 and this finally gives us negative 2 which is a value less than zero this is a point of local maxima what we obtained we're using the first derivative test and what we are obtaining using the second derivative test is exactly saying the same thing that x equals to zero is a point of local maxima with a value with a maximum value of one so e raised to the power of x square is actually the bell function bell function because it has the shape of a bell 
with a maximum value occurring at x equals to 0 with a value of 1. And this is what we have found out using the first derivative as well as the second derivative test. Let's move on to the next problem. Problem number 4. So here in this problem, we need to show that the maximum value of this function, 1 over x, raised to the power of x is e raised to the power of 1 over e. So let us begin. So we will suppose that y is equals to 1 over x raised to the power of x. We'll take the logarithm on both sides. So natural log of y will be equals to x times natural log of 1 over x. So here we have used the property of logarithm. Now we'll take the derivative on both sides. This will give us 1 over y times dy over dx, which is equals to, we'll use, need to use the product rule here. So this will be x times derivative with respect to x of natural log of 1 over x plus natural log of 1 over x multiplied to derivative with respect to x of, if you want to be more comfortable with logarithmic differentiation, I suggest you to go to lecture number 19, where we have talked in detail about logarithmic differentiation. So let's continue. So we have 1 over y times dy over dx equals to x times. So we have derivative of a logarithmic function, which is 1 over x. So x here is 1 over x, but we'll have to use the chain rule and multiply it to derivative of 1 over x with respect to x plus natural log of 1 over x times derivative of x with respect to x, that's simply 1. Right. So we have 1 over y, derivative of y with respect to x is equals to x squared times the derivative of 1 over x, this will be negative 1 over x squared plus natural log of 1 over x which gives us 1 over y times derivative of y with respect to x as equals to negative 1 plus natural log of 1 over x. Or simply put, derivative of y with respect to x, this is equals to y multiplied to negative 1 plus natural log of 1 over x. We're going to use one more property. So we have natural log of 1 over x. The natural log of 1 over x can be represented as natural log of 1 minus natural log of x. Natural log of 1 always goes to 0, so we have natural log of x. So this gives us y times the negative y times 1 plus natural log of x. So this is the value of dy over dx. So let's box it and call it equation number 1. We'll use it again. For the time being, what we need to do here is find the critical value. For that, we are going to set dy over dx equals to 0. This means that we have negative y times 1 plus natural log of x. This is equals to 0. Uh, here, y cannot be equals to 0. The reason being, we have chosen y to be equals to 1 over x raised to the power of x. There will be no such value of x for which y will be 0. In that case, the only possibility is that 1 plus natural log of x is equals to 0. Solving for x, we have natural log of x is equals to minus 1 or x is equals to e raised to the power of negative 1, 1 over e. So this is the critical value. Now what we'll do, instead of doing the first derivative test, we'll straight away go to the second derivative test. For this, we need to take the derivative of equation number 1 with respect to x. So this is going to give us the second derivative. This will be derivative with respect to x. Let's write it down. Negative y times 1 plus natural log of x. We'll come back to this equation number 1 in a moment. So let's use the product rule. So first we have negative y multiplied to derivative with respect to x of 1 plus natural log of x plus 1 plus natural log of x multiplied to derivative with respect to x of negative y. Fine. This gives us negative y times derivative with respect to x of 1, which is a constant of 0, and derivative of the logarithmic function is 1 over x minus 
1 plus natural log of x times dy over dx. So we'll substitute the value of dy over dx with negative y times 1 plus log x. So this will give us square. So this is the value of d squared y over dx squared. Now substituting the value of y with 1 over x raised to the power of x and performing the required algebra, we should get. Now we'll use our critical value, which is x equals to 1 over e and substitute this value here. So here, d squared y over dx squared calculated at x equals to 1 over e. So this will become, so we have e raised to the power of negative 1 whole raised to the power of negative 1 over e times 1 plus natural log of 1 over e squared minus e raised to the power of negative 1 multiplied to 1 over e minus 1. And when we do the perform the calculation, this gives us a value negative e whole raised to the power of 1 over e plus 1. So this value is always positive and this positive value is multiplied to negative. So we have a negative value. So that means this x equals to 1 over e is a point of local maxima. So we have obtained a local maxima value. And what will be the value of the function at this point? So f of 1 over e. So we had 1 over x all raised to the power of 1 over e. So that means we have e raised to the power of 1 over e. So this is going to be the local maximum of the function which is attained at local maxima value 1 over e and this is exactly what we were asked to prove so yes e raised to the power of 1 over e is the maximum value of this particular function